Today's presentation is titled How AI Can Improve Human Co Cooperation Through Suggesting Follow-Up Action in Modeled Newscasts. The Human uh, Cooperation Venture Countering Eliza uh, Yudowski's AGI Ruin and List of Lethalities. Uh, so Kim uh, is a professor in Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry here at University of Alberta, and uh, he is an American pathologist and co-founder of the BAMF classification, the first standardized international classification for renal uh, allograft biopsies. He is also uh, the founder of the BAMF Foundation for Allograft Pathology. So Kim, over to you. Floor is yours. Okay. So I'm I'm going to paste two references in the chat that may be useful later. And now I will share my screen. So are you able to see that? So that's the first slide. This is the second. Are you able to yeah. see that? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. cool. All right. So I'm going to talk to you about how AI can improve human cooperation through suggesting follow-up action from modeled newscasts, the human cooperation venture. And this idea comes out of a course I've taught for 11 years on technology and the future of medicine. Um, it also has a great deal to do with medicine writ large, the social responsibility of medicine, the idea of the physician as the natural attorney of the poor, as Rudolf Virchow said at the age of 27 in uh, uh, a past era. And it's much about fixing problems of society each year. In that course, I encounter 66 new young people and their create creativity is really our secret sauce. It, it's a hybrid course open to all faculties, to undergraduates, graduate students. It's taught both semesters. And now you may be, if, if you're a student watching this, maybe keen to take it. But I have to tell you, we're not giving it in fall of 2022. Uh, we've decided to just take that one term off and then we're gonna teach it again in January, 2023 and every semester beyond that. Um, so one of the things that has emerged from that course is the idea of artificial intelligence assisting with the 24 big challenges of humanity. They are listed here. And um, you're probably aware that AI has done some remarkable things recently, such as mostly solving protein folding and solving the, the uh, beginning steps of nuclear fusion. The time is right to think of other socially useful things that AI might be able to help with. So when you look at a list like this, you want visuals. Now the visual down here on the screen is um, Ishita Mogi and, and me uh, presenting a video together, but she is also a graphic artist. And of these 24 challenges of humanity, these are her pictures depicting the first 12. And if you're a person like she is with graphic arts talents, you can directly have in your mind what you want to draw and then draw it. And, and, it's, and it's simple, right? But anyway, we, we decided for the second 12 to use images from DALI, which is a large language uh, model producing images through AI. And that is an entirely different process. And that becomes important, the kind of negotiation one has. So 
Uh, for instance, one of our challenges is unknown unknowns. And this is what Dolly provided us as the graphic for unknown unknowns. But originally, one of the challenges was genetic degeneration. When I put that in to Dolly as a search term, it threatened to kick me off of the program and I was never coming back if I searched for that term again. And you know, you, you would say, well, gee, that's a glitch in the program, but I don't think so. I think I learned a lot from that moment because in fact, that is a kind of biased term. It's a term used by people with racist tendencies and so on. It's not a good term to have in the list. So we uh, deferred to Dolly's wishes and changed genetic degeneration to genetic engineering and Dolly was happy and, <laughs> and so on. And in the course of this presentation, you'll find a lot of other instances in which that kind of negotiation with the Dolly program has taken place. And I think the results have been positive, generally speaking. So we have an existing team based on our previous CIFAR grant of nine faculty and nine students. We're preparing now for CA, CIHR Equitable AI for Public Health grant that is much more medical. And so we're going to add medical people to that. So we'll be adding six or more than six additional faculty to, to the people you see listed here. As I've said, the students are also very important in this. And here are some pictures of the students. If we end up with funding, we're planning to use some of that funding for an administrator and a graduate student. And Emily Kamani and Terry and Stokowski are the lead candidates for those positions. But the main thrust here has to do with Eliezer Yudkowsky's essay entitled AGI Ruin, A List of Lethalities. And if you haven't looked at this yet, this is one of the scariest documents ever. It has 43 bolded sections, each of which is sort of telling you how artificial intelligence is going to kill us all in the next 17 years, and complaining that nobody is doing anything about it. <laughs> and there ha has been some thought that there's a certain part of the AI safety uh, community, artificial intelligence alignment community, that is possibly making things worse by simply emphasizing how scary this idea that AI is gonna kill us off in 17 years or less and uh, making this more and more uh, shiny and prominent, this uh, existential threat. So I decided to kind of turn that around based largely on, on what I've learned from Rich Sutton, and to think about the opposite. Couldn't the same facets of AI uh, create an AI utopia, a world much better than we ever imagined? And isn't that a better way to think of this? So how soon is AGI coming? There are people, <laughs> you can see here, uh, 272 people with 666 predictions of when AGI is coming. And something very dramatic happened on this metaculous prediction of AGI in May of 2022, that the predicted year at which AGI would exist came down quite rapidly from 2057 
to 2039 and is staying down at the 2039 um, point for, for now. And, and that's largely uh, justified on the basis of success of large language models, uh, GPT-3, Dolly-2, and, and so on, things like that. So AI rapid self-improvement could also lead to an AI-led global cooperation that humans could possibly never have achieved on their own, an AGI utopia. There's nothing more important than making this a reality or increasing the possibility of it and avoiding Ilya Zeryadkowski's AGI ruin and list of lethalities. So what's the best way to do that? What's the best way for these AI generated better than human ideas about human cooperation to emerge to save humanity from itself? Yeah. So I, I thought maybe one way to begin to answer that was to analyze newscasts. And there I recognize I'm doing something not very many people do. Newscasts have become remarkably unpopular, especially with young people and celebrities. And if you talk to young people and famous people, almost none of them watch or listen to newscasts. And they can tell you all the reasons why, why it's actually bad for your mental health to listen to, listen to newscasts. But I, I thought we, we don't just want a general idea of what kind of improve cooperation we, we need. We need specific examples of the types of cooperation we need. So starting July 1st, I listen to CBC Radio 1, the world this hour, usually at 4 a.m., but sometimes at 5 or 6, sometimes more, more than once. Each newscast is between 4 and 10 minutes, and I recorded them. So I, I could go back and analyze them later. But that's not sufficient because you're doing something almost uh, no other human beings are doing who avoid the newscast. So let's look at something more popular. NBC Nightly News in the States has a kid's version. They only generate a new one one or two times a week. So it's not daily. But I was also interested in what are the differences between Nightly News Kids version and CBC Radio 1. And one is that CBC Radio 1 leaves you hanging, <laughs> leaves anxiety unresolved regularly in almost every newscast. For instance, let's take the first newscast on July 1st, where CBC Radio 1 told me that there were forest fires burning around Machu Picchu in Peru. And this was an awful thing for me to hear. I've been to Machu Picchu. It's one of the most beautiful historical sites in the, in the world. I hated the idea of it burning down. But it was never on the news again. Now, what actually happened was, it was an international effort to um, to put out those forest fires. And um, it was successful. And the forest fires never got anywhere close to Machu Picchu. So it was a good news story, but nobody ever heard that, that resolution. Um, and so, and in, in contrast, the um, NBC Nightly News kids version, when they talk about anything disturbing, they then lessen the children's anxiety by telling them that everything will be okay or how it will be resolved. They never leave the kids hanging. They always resolve the issue. And so um, it, I think is, is kind of informative. Now, if, if you look at the July 4th um, uh, the, the, um, 
article that I pasted in the chat about a new democratic process that uh, AGI had come up with. That just gives one example. It's a pretty exciting example of a machine generated democratic process that the human beings like better than the human generated democratic process, but it's only one, right? And for this, I think we would need multiple mechanisms that work for all the different kind of cooperation between humans that we would like to see established here. And probably there is some modification of a large language model that could be used to do that. Only large companies then with, with those kinds of resources would be able to do this, but it would be pretty exciting thing to witness. And um, so, what does Dali think that would look like? <laughs> this is kind of interesting. I don't know what you think you're seeing here, but to me, it's pretty clear that these are like two human beings trying to cooperate with each other, but with, you know, metallic faces, probably with significant copper content. And then they are turning green in what some people think is a very attractive artistic way, they call that patina, which is what happens to copper surfaces over time. And that's what Dali is presenting to us as an example, oil painting, improved ways of cooperating for humans emerging from machine learning, large language models. Yeah, so how about that? You probably haven't thought about patina for a long time. You certainly didn't think it had anything to do with human cooperation. Now, this is a different kind of picture. This is from Shutterstock. You can get the same kinds of pictures from Adobe Stock, but you have to realize how remarkably fictional this picture is. Nothing like this is going to happen. I think we should be confident. So the exciting thing about this uh, proposal of these ideas of cooperation coming from the large language model is that it would only work if the invention had a true understanding of the world. The first such large language model to have that perhaps, but that understanding would not be anything like our understanding of the world, but it would likely work better. It's a different model from ours, but it would likely work better. And the evidence for that is in the Rich Sutton essay called The Bitter Lesson, which I also pasted in the chat, which shows that as much as we humans are proud of the way we do things, it's a very little value to pass that information on to AIs. It's simply distracting. All of the big accomplishments of AI have not needed an understanding of how humans did this. And in fact, that maybe slowed things down that people thought was important to convey to the AI the way that humans did what we're wanting them to do Whereas in fact, they didn't need that. They, they can do a lot of these things through general methods, search and learning and self-play, playing against themselves uh, as, as opposed to seeing how humans do things. So what's in this picture? This is a depiction of an AI experiencing childhood, right? with a human teacher teaching it things and human books, and maybe this would take 18 years to teach the AI. This is not the way it's going to happen. This is absolutely not a thing. As cute or appealing as you may find this picture, nothing like that. this is going to happen. And perhaps, 
the benefits of childhood, we can an analyze what those are, what things we want AI to be able to do with this childhood-like experience, and probably we can do it much faster and much more directly than having human beings try right, to teach these various lessons like we teach humans who are undergoing childhood. And what will the ultimate outcome be? So um, CEO of DeepMind, Demis uh, Hassabis, talks with some enthusiasm about the future point where an AI wins the Nobel Peace Prize. And don't you think this will be one of those moments that this will be pretty exciting if AI comes up with a way for humans to cooperate, it's much better than the means that humans have found. The news then improves and celebrities and young people go back to watching the, the news. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be, be exciting? So, so that's what could happen. So I want to point out this slide is not about us winning the Nobel Peace Prize. It's about the AI winning the Nobel Peace Prize, which is a much more exciting idea. And what is the alternative? The alternative, if we do nothing to counter Iliades or Yudkowsky's idea, AGI ruin and the list of lethalities, is that we encourage trolls that thrive on chaos and watching the world burn, and we cannot allow that, as eventually this will prevent all other good plans from succeeding. Put more simply, if we fail at the AI alignment challenge, we may not get to address the other 23 challenges of the human race. So human cooperation <laughs> venture is priority one. Now, on June 18th, 2022, there was a CNBC article entitled Computing Scientists Are Questioning Whether Alphabet's Deep Mind Will Ever Make AI More Human Like, stating that Deep Mind's main product continues to be PR or politics and not technical innovation or products. Now, I know this was intended to be negative, but I it quite positive because it's similar to what I think I myself am doing. I'm promoting good ideas in the world and getting other people excited about them. And I think that's beneficial. And uh, I think that probably the, the reality is DeepMind is doing both things. They're making scientific progress, but they're also making progress in the areas of public relations and politics, and we need both. And if we succeed in getting everyone talking about artificial general intelligence utopia rather than AGI ruin, then we've won most of the battle. Now the world needs both introverts and extroverts. Uh, Rich Sutton and I have talked about the fact that probably most of the time, but not all the time, I could be characterized as an extrovert and he as an introvert, uh, but that's not always true. Sometimes those roles reverse, but such people can work together. And every time one discusses or promotes the idea of an AGI utopia, the chances of it occurring improve and the length of time to wait for it lessens. High impact education is education that changes human behavior. And I hope I'm doing that right now. I hope I've inspired you today to work toward a world created by AGI much better for humans than anything we ever imagined. Now, what does Dali think about this? So if you search for Van Gogh style stained glass window, physician Kim Solas imagines artificial general intelligence utopia with improved human cooperation, truthfulness, and flourishing, you get this picture. 
it's kind of amusing, isn't it? Because it's not a picture of Kim Solez. It's a picture of Vincent van Gogh, right? And it, but it's also a painting in his style. And then what are all the objects there? What are the elements depicted? Well, you can identify one. There's this thing, which is like a light bulb or a torch of some kind, maybe looking for the truth, right? But what are all these things? I don't know what they are. And I think most of you don't know what they are, but I think it could be important. And machines could teach us what those things are and how they're important in human cooperation. And that would be really, really cool. Yeah. So anyway, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, we're only 28 minutes in. So I'd say we have rather abundant time for discussion and a lot of very thoughtful people here. So I would welcome that. So let me now sh stop sharing so we can discuss. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Dr. Solis, for the presentation. It was really interesting. And uh, I think the floor is open for discussion now. And if you uh, want to ask any questions or uh, engage in discussion, please feel free to unmute yourself and uh, uh, have a great discussion. So any questions? I think Rich, Rich will go first. Rich, yes. So there's, there's all these problems in the world and uh, ways things can go well and poorly. A lot of them have to do with human nature. And uh, so um, now I think the question is pertinent is, are these basic problems of, 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 of our society that our society has to deal with? And, or are our you know, is it the responsibility of us or is it the responsibility of AGI to, to fix these, these human problems? Like how do we work together in peace and harmony uh, and avoid racism and stuff? Can the machines really help or is that really something that has to come from us? I think that's a question that maybe is on people's minds. Yeah, no, I, I think there's, there's one other thing here that is quite interesting and that is in the course, we talk a lot about quantum biology and quantum things. And Demis Hassabis ha has a lot of videos you can watch, and I've watched them all. He firmly believes that in the world of important things, quantum doesn't explain anything, nothing. So you'll find that when people have asked me about um, AI fixing racism, for instance, and, and that it's much too complicated and AI can't possibly do that. I have said that probably quantum algorithms could be found that, and that, that maybe AGI would be much uh, more able to do that than uh, human beings would. And, and that's one of the ways in which this uh, could be solved. And I would say that for whatever it's worth, you know, Demis would say that's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, you, you, you can't point to a single important thing where quantum algorithms are the way to explain it or the way to solve it. Um, so I, I, I was really quite um, humbled by, by hearing it. Say, say that because it's kind of been my fallback when people say something's too complicated. Uh, I always say you haven't considered quantum. So, so if he's right, <laughs> then, then uh, you know, may, maybe the, the assistance that a AGI can provide is much less than we think. But I, the thing that I'm, I'm, convinced of is the different model of the world that AGI will almost certainly have from the human model will lead to AGI suggesting really important things that actually work. 
it won't just be trivial. If it were true that the best way for AGI to learn things is to learn the way humans learn and to go to school and all that kind of thing, maybe AGI's assistant could be very small and trivial and not worth the effort. But I think it is likely because of the very different models of the world that they'll be able to come up with things that work for humans, but that humans would never ever have thought of. And, and that, that, that's an exciting prospect. <clears throat> Bruce Matichuk says, AI will learn what we teach it with some additional variations. No, no, but AI, AI will also <laughs> learn without us, right? I mean, if it knows what the challenge is, it will learn from the challenge setting itself, from playing that game with itself, from direct search, direct learning without needing humans. So it gets way beyond us very, very quickly. So other questions? Any other questions, please? Um, I have a question. Sure. Yeah, Simon. So like in an AGI utopia, humanity will learn a lot about cooperation, but it's like contingent on having less human input, right? But then like the creators of AGI and there'll be different AGIs, they might inadvertently introduce biases in the way their AGI will think. Like for one of your examples was, you know, Dali didn't allow you to ser search certain prompts. Combining the words like human and pig was deemed right. unacceptable. So it's like a bit of a conundrum that like to get the full unperturbed benefits of AGI, it comes from less human intervention. But isn't inevitable that each AGI will have its own inherent biases introduced from its own human creators. Right. But if you think of something much smarter than us, um, don't you think that they will likely solve some of these problems? In other words, they're not going to be stuck intellectually where we are <laughs> at a much, much higher level. They will recognize the problem that you, you, you just mentioned and figure out what to do about it. And, and it's likely to be a highly effective solution. So if things in general are going in the right direction, if they are aiming for a, a, an AGI utopia that is satisfying to humans and is good for the world in general, and if we're aiming for the same thing, they are likely to be able to, to figure out a lot of things. I mean, like that 30 second uh, um, video of, of mine from the promo for the future and all, all that jazz. It talks about you wake up in the morning and the level of oxygen in the air has gone up, pollution is gone, Everything is, is, is green. The level of the oceans has, has gone down. You don't know how any of these things happen, but they, these are all things that we don't know how to fix that AGI would know how to fix. And, and yeah, so I, that's, that's my thought about what would happen. So like combining what Bruce is saying right now, it seems like our, like, no, like, no matter what we do, we can just throw GPUs at the problem and AJ will definitely get smarter. But, but Bruce is saying, like, do we have another role? So one role is just throwing more hardware at it and it'll scale. But another thing is like, do we have to direct AI? Is that another role we have to direct it? So its perspective is to help us. Yeah, or well, we at, a, at an that? early point, there's this idea of the dialogue right? Like you, you have two competing AIs try, trying to optimize something. And they bring the solution to a human being that sort of 
likes some of the solutions, doesn't like others. And, and so that, that, that was in the past at least thought to be one way of, of, of fixing the AI alignment problem. But now it's sort of called human in the loop, right? <laughs> to have a human in there somewhere sort of reacting to what the AGIs are, are doing. And that's fine as long as the effective IQ, the AGI is only a little bit higher than ours. But when it gets much, much higher, then we're not gonna understand what's going on, period, right? And like one, one of my, my depictions of, of AGI from, um, from Dali has what looks like communication via thoughts. The, these little blue circles going from the head of the human to, to, the, to the AI. So very, very rapid communication without needing to say anything. You, you don't know if it's filtered or if that means that the AGI knows everything in the mind of the human or, yeah. But anyway, I think that, that um, uh, eventually, I think as Rich has all also said, we will lose control, but it may be the happiest loss of control we've ever had, you know? That like the world yeah, is man. so great and we have no idea why, but it's just the coolest circumstance ever, you know? So. Uh, Rich raised his hand, uh, but we have question from Bruce here as well in the chat. Uh, so, let me first go uh, with reading Bruce's questions. Uh, how do we direct AI to think about problems in the way we prefer? The problem with uncontrolled AI is that it can create things but can produce terrible things as well. Consider the terrible ideas that GP3 generates or DALI2 generates. Yeah, well, I've had DALI2 now for eight days. And it has not produced anything offensive during that time, absolutely nothing. And I think uh, Simon has the idea that's because of human hard coding, that, that maybe that's not the, the AI, but for instance, the prompts that it won't follow and it threatens to throw you off the program, throw you out, out of the program, may, maybe those are hard coded that the human creators of Dolly thought that anybody who searches for these terms should not be allowed to use the uh, program. So I, I, I would point out that the idea that terrible ideas come from Dolly 2, um, I, I have now done, uh, I don't know, I've, I've generated maybe 600 images with it from specific prompts. And um, yeah, there, there's not a single one that, that, that seems you know, offensive. Um, the occasional one is a little boring, but most are remarkably surprising. And a lot of them you, you learn many things from. Yeah, I mean, the, these programs are also, also proprietary, right? They, they contain some, uh, elements that are not known to us. We don't know what they are. They're not just pure large language models or large language models plus, and we don't know what the plus part is. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's true you can use GPT-3 to create text that is bad, but I, I've yet to see a really evil image created by, uh, by uh, Dali, uh, at least not in the hands of uh, Kim Solis and the people suggesting prompts to him. Yeah, that has not happened. <coughs> well, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll jump in with a little bit more direct of a comment and question, and that is that it seems to me that. It's getting more and more intelligent. Of course, I'm I'm in the field and generating AI, and I I want to make super smart AI too, right? I'm really happy about that. But there's this you know growing concern that I have 
that we 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 can't control it right like even with gpt3 or even with dali2 sometimes it creates some images that are not particularly wholesome but it's rare right but it does and if you try really really hard you can you can get it to do bad things right and but then think about dali2 and dali2 is created by a set of very very responsible people that you know a right. group i should say but what about Dali two? What about Dali three created by somebody else? Right, that they're 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 not they're not these responsible people. They are basically uh, they have a set of uh, they can access all, the Dali two algorithm is actually quite simple when you look at it. It's not, not a whole lot of code, right? In Dali two. Or even, or even GPT three for that matter. I mean, and these are reproducible by anybody on the planet. I mean, you just have to have a little bit of a computing science background, and you can make your own Dali two, and then you can make it do. You can direct it to be as horrible as you want it to be, right? Same thing with GPT three, right? GPT three is incredibly intelligent, but you could you could direct it if you want. You could direct it to be terrible. It seems to me that what we're going to have to start doing is we're going to have to start passing laws. It says you 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 can't do this. You can't create these things because you could cr easily create AI that spams the internet with with horrible things and yeah. is smart yeah. enough to circumvent all of the protections that people have put out there to you know like incredible. You want to do a phishing campaign? Well, you could create an AI that searches for an optimal way to do a phishing campaign, you know, it, it searches for optimal phishing strategies, right? By phishing right. and then but seeing how it gets what, stopped or not. You're, so you're, you're kind laws. of looking at only one side of this. I think well, no, the I, other I, side I, is that the, the, it's just like stealing laptops on aircraft. No one would do that now. It doesn't make any sense. But in the late 1990s and early 2000s, it was a remunerative kind of crime, right? And then the world changed where you, you were guaranteed to get caught. The price of, of laptops went down in every way you can think of. That kind of crime became something extremely stupid to do. And then eventually no one on earth was stealing laptops on planes. And the same behavioral changes are going to come about because of some of these rules with the large language models. And some of it's going to seem highly desirable. So I, I grant you could make it go wrong. But the other thing is, if Everybody in the AI safety community is talking about what happens when things go wrong and how AI is going to kill us, then that is a possible outcome. But no, if no. substantial people are talking about the other side, then that becomes a possible outcome. And well, that's well, what I would like to see. Well, no, I, I think that you're right, that this is you know, this is the possibility that we all want, right? But, you know, guns can defend us and guns can kill people, right? AI can defend us and make great things, but AI can kill people too. Like AI can, it, 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 the issue is that you, 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 can pro, you, you can project as much rosiness as you want, but it's still possible to use these Incredible okay, but tools. you just talked about very, very... quantifying this. Yeah, that's right. and let's talk about quantifying the overall feelings pe people have, right? There was an AI safety meeting in Puerto Rico in January 2015, right? Hmm. I think there were 96 people there. Rich was one of them. And... Um, almost maybe 95 of them were planning to to enslave sentient ai when it when and if it ever exists so the proportion of people arguing for the ai utopia or predicting it is too small that's what i'm saying 
you've talked about proportions. I'm telling you, that's the simplest problem to think of here. We simply need to get more people talking about it, making it happen, making yeah. it possible to happen. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Well, I, do, you, I, do you have a strong argument against that? Do you think Rich was behaving wrong in January 2015? You know, AI utopia is, is only possible if we ensure that AI anti-utopia doesn't can't exist, right? So yeah, the, but if we like, make it, the story of yeah. anti-utopia so shiny and, and, and visually memorable that that's all people can think about, then the AI safety problem will get worse and worse and worse. And that's some people's mm -hmm. analysis of what is happening now, that since almost everybody's talking about AI apocalypse, we're making it more and more likely every AI safety re researcher, except for a few at the U of A, well, are doing that. But no, you're you're are you arguing that we shouldn't be thinking about AI safety? I mean, I'm not really sure the point. Well, I mean, read every it's easy read to think Iliezer's about AI. 43 <laughs> bolded statements. What he's saying there is he's been talking about this for over a decade. Yeah. No one's paying any attention. No one is doing anything substantive about it. <laughs> so no one's doing and okay. Yeah. So, so and and it's not hard to read. It's accessible everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you won't have a hard time finding it, finding it to read. He's put in all the arguments there, and they're extremely scary, and. It's interesting. It, it, it's now been weeks since he did that. It was, I think, June 6th when, when, when he posted that. Ours is the only suggestion that there is a positive alternative, that things could, could be ending up in a world much better than anybody imagined rather than much worse. And what is the criticism of what I've done there? It's <laughs> very... Mm -hmm. Very amusing. It's using the word quixotic, which I cannot argue with, because if you go in my office here, there is that famous uh, uh, drawing of. <laughs> yeah, but Don, so do you? Uh, is your Don suggestion that we shouldn't pass laws? Then is that what you're suggesting? That we shouldn't that we shouldn't have laws that restrict the U.S. That we shouldn't restrict people in any way because. Because, you know, like AI utopia is definitely possible. I, I'm, you know, trying, I'm trying to get there as, as, as much as any other AI researcher is trying to get there. Well, good. <laughs> but, but, but that, but that's not really the question that I'm asking. I'm not asking whether or not AI utopia is possible, because I think that that's, uh, you know, something that we all agree on, right? AI utopia is possible, but, but, but the, the the question I'm asking is a little bit different than the question that you're answering. And the question I'm asking is, how do we avoid the opposite of AI utopia? Because if all we do is think about AI utopia, the possibility of it happening is zero. If all yeah, we, yeah, yeah the rich well, no, no, but, but, but all all the literature yeah, let me and, let me jump in and, yeah, and yeah. give you because i think your argument is directly pertinent to this um bruce bruce is saying you know if all we think about is a utopia uh, uh things, things things might not work out well but you, it's basically it's almost the same point as your point your point is everyone is talking yeah. about the dystopia right and I think that's yeah. true bruce that, that everyone yeah, is talking it is about true it. yeah and how this is going to be bad for us? They'll take over the all you know the robot overlords and the terminators. This is the dominant point of view, and Kim is trying to balance that. Maybe he's balancing it by going very far to the utopian side, and maybe I, I don't. That that's that's that I think is reasonable, although it leaves one open to the criticism that, that you're not considering both sides. But there is an imbalance in in the world uh, in treatments right. of AI futures. Yeah, but I, I but I disagree with that point. I think that most people who are currently in the AI field who are developing AI 
believe in this AI utopia, and that's why they're working on AI. So I, I'd say that no, vast but this majority of, the of criticism, of AI, again, isn't it true that in the newspapers, most thing you'll hear about is the dystopians? No, yeah. I don't think so. Yes, I, yes I, it I, is. I subscribe to all kinds of AI journals. I read AI papers. And every once in a while, I'll see the AI dystopia. Every once in a while. I, AI, the only, AI, AI, journal, time, AI the paper. Only time that I hear about AI yeah. dystopia is when I go look at AI dystopia people. And then they, then they talk about AI dystopia. No, but the general public sees 97% negative stuff regularly, every really? day. Wow. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you can document that easily. Yeah. I mean, it, there's just no question about it. And you can also document what happened at that uh, safety meet, meeting in 2015. You know, there were journalists and, you know, celebrities. It was very well covered. Yeah. There's no question how singular Rich's view was and how almost every other human being there was trying to calculate the best way to enslave AI. Yeah. <laughs> Before it enslaved us. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, that was, that's right. It's, just, um, yeah. it, it, I, I, it's not so much that I worry about AI enslaving us, although I think that that's a real possibility. I think the more impertinent and, and important issue is the the power the the power that exists with AI to do terrible things, you know it's it's like the power of the of of a nuclear bomb, right? If, if the thing is the nuclear bomb is extremely difficult to manufacture, you know, like you like manufacturing a nuclear bomb is very very hard, and you can control it. You can tell if people are making it because they have to accumulate yep. you know, radioactive material, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, it's it's difficult for terrorists or people that want to do bad things to make one. But look at the awesome power. If you could make one, you could you could blow up, you know, cities and do it awful things. And if you're a not terrible person, you'll you'll you'll, you'll gladly do that. And 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 this is why we spend so much money and time making sure that that never happens. But the same the AI is the same thing. I mean, you can make you can make an AI system like DALI 2 or GPT-3 specifically for doing terrible things if you wanted to. Yes. Do but I think that, that what Rich is talking about is worth considering. I mean, you can look at sentiment analysis, however you want to do it. There's, there's no question where the sentiment lies in the general public you know, discourse sure. in, 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 in print, radio, TV, it's all above 95% negative. And, and uh, you know, it's even true in uh, <clears throat> videos for the general public. What, what, whatever vehicle you want to look at first, you'll all come to the same answer that there is a dramatic preponderance of, uh, you know, apocalyptic views. <laughs> That's what's there. That's what I'm trying to counter. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that that's true, but I. I. I think it's in. A... Don't you agree that it's quantifiable? And uh, well, yeah. well, how would we quantify it then? So, if you were to do a survey on the number of articles produced on a on a daily basis. How many of them yeah. are negative versus positive? Yeah. I mean, has anybody done that survey like that? Yeah. That's well, cool. you you can start Sounds with like one a very good simple idea. thing. Just start with the article critiquing what I've done here. Where the guy who calls me quixotic points out that I'm the only one doing this. That you would think there'd be other people from the AI community talking about how well things could go with artificial general in intelligence. Yeah. But he says, you can't find that. So yeah. from his point of view in, in the general public, it's just not there. 
So that's the starting point I, I would point you to. Not, not hard to find. And why don't you try to prove him wrong? Well, I, I, I don't know. Like I say, I read a lot of articles. I don't come across me, that many. That You're I'm not just... a member of the general public. I think you gave up interaction with them a long time ago, it sounds like. And you hang out with, with people like you, which is fine. That, that, yeah. All right. That's, that's possible. Yeah, I think that I, I've, I'm a physician and I've diagnosed the situation with you. So. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. the deal. Yeah, does someone else want to say something? Uh, Emily, Richard, come uh, you comment, so. Hi, what, Dr. What was can, I, can I say something? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so so AI for me, is this, this is something new to me to, to think about. Um, uh, so my first thought is that this is quite scary. So I think what scares someone may make one run away from it. So especially one doesn't know how to control it. I think that's what the general population is doing. So that's why you you notice that everything looks negative. I I don't know. That's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I think there there there's. There's a natural, um, you know, protective response to run away from something scary, and and you're right. A lot of fear the, of the unknown, fear of the unknown. Yeah, yeah. fear, fear of the unknown. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it is. It's, it's fed new with AI. It's yeah. new with any technology. This is not a new thing. I know you AI guys think it's a brand new thing. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> No, I I, it's, I agree it's not with a that. new thing, but it's just something that I wasn't really thinking about previously. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, the phone company back in the 1980s used to have little men configure routes for telephone traffic. And people had said, well, why don't you just have an adaptive algorithm that deals with it under periods of high load? Like, oh my God, people will lose their jobs. The telephone network will get taken over by these algorithms. And all these horrible things will happen. Well, of course, it's much more efficient. It's much more accurate. It works more quickly. And all of a sudden, the phone network much uh, performed much better and cost much less. But there was a whole bunch of pushback and every single time that's, you know, you can go back as far as technology exists and they're going to be, and it's a natural thing. We would die, right? Evolution. If we just stepped off cliffs all the time, we would die. So it's good to have this right. worry, Fear. but this, this uh, paranoia is, and, and, and it's, and it's uninformed paranoia. And that's the problem. And the media, general media just blows that stuff out there. And it's unfortunate. Well, I it's hard but to... I think that that's a different kind of question, though. The, the, the question of whether or not AI will take over our jobs is a little bit different. than. That's the not the question. Of... That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, that is one thing you have to worry about. But yeah, oh, my God. You know, we forget. Yeah. Remember George Bush when he made that comment? Maybe you guys, you're Canadian, so probably you don't. <sighs> but there was a State of the Union address back in God knows what, what weapons of mass destruction. And I think right. well, whether or not those exist in Iraq, Look at the U.S. government. We are full of weapons of mass destruction, right? Really? We look at people, we go, oh my God, this AI could do this. People are doing horrible things to each other all the time. They are. And, and yet we don't seem to worry about that, but my God forbid, AI is going to do this. You know, I get, let's, let's get real, right? Yeah. But I, I, but I think AI is something like super powerful AI is something fundamentally different that no. hasn't existed on the planet before. Like we don't have... We don't have this thing. It doesn't exist. All right. So, so unknown. So, so we're fear of it. That's exactly yeah. what we're saying, Bruce. Yeah. 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 Well, we're definitely. And what Kim is one thing Kim is trying to do is is talk about it in a way that it doesn't have to be unknown <laughs> and scary. Well, I, I I think that I think that it is unknown and and scary, and I think that there's lots of good arguments to be made for us to pr continue to pursue this in earnest because of all the good things that can happen from incredibly intelligent. I know you're trying to be reasonable, Bruce, but, yeah. but you're not acknowledging that there's an overwhelming uh, negative spin in the press presentation and therefore the public's I, perception. I, I, there, I am, there I just am definitely isn't any disagreeing, question about disagreeing that. with that point. <laughs> so, but, so you don't have to say it again and again, I guess. Yeah, okay. Right. 
but how do how do okay so how do we the, I, I, the, then the question is how do we validate that so maybe maybe that would be the end the the end of my argument well i mean you can take eliezer's to validate it's actually easy to validate it's it's yeah. really we we consider it objective you just go to the okay. newspapers and get the percentage of articles that are positive span right. and spin, and you'll find or go to google search and put, type in you know uh type, type in something there'll be some way to search it <laughs> anyway, anyway anyway so i don't even want to talk about that because you know that's okay. just some, a disagreement we have that's empirical uh, but you understand our point of view you know i i and and i, I and i agree that the that that there is that position that you know that one can take i just i guess i just see i see a different and and maybe kim is right maybe i'm insulated in some way so that yeah. i can't i don't it's see a the negative nice effect. life you know never never interacting with the common man and woman That's only seeing either. other ai people that could be yeah. its own yeah. kind of utopia <laughs> this, this is one benefit the, of kim's analysis he has been looking at what does the public think? I mean, that's okay. really the focus of, of Kim's work is to mm. say, yeah. what do people think and how can we contribute to that? And so he, it's, he, like, you know, you've been doing AI and I've been doing AI and, but Kim's been sort of looking, you know, what is the public's view of this topic? Right. And how can we help yeah. it, how can we make it better? Education. Yeah. So any questions from other people? I, I'm pleased that so many people came. Um, I just want to make sure that we hear from everybody who'd like to. I guess we're over time. Yeah, OK, that we, we are. All <laughs> right, well, I look forward to the video version then. So anyway. Good. Thank you all. Oh, thanks. Thanks, everyone, for joining in for today's seminar and uh, yeah. having an engaged discussion, especially Bruce, Rich, uh, Rich and everyone else, uh, Simon as well. Uh, and thanks, Kim, for a wonderful presentation. It was really wonderful to listen to you and uh, listening to the engaging discussion. I hope to stay connected. We'll see you next week. Yep. That was great. Okay. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.